And uh, in a minute, we are going to start off our discussion about equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, Imo is going to be uh, here to have the conversation or ask, answer the question. And uh, we definitely encourage you to join the like video audio. This is not a presentation, so it would it would be much better if we will you know we, we can see you and you can chat uh, and speak rather than uh, waiting uh, for us to. Uh, look at the Q&A, but of course, if you don't feel comfortable uh, with that, you can use a Q&A for uh, asking questions and we are going to uh, answer that as well. Um, I hope you know how to join us. There is a button on the right top, a purple one, uh, which should say like audio video, I think. And uh, when you click, uh, it's going to check whether your audio video is ready. And then if you say, if you confirm that, then uh, I can add you to our stream. So, yeah. And that's about it, I think. So, we can start. Great. Thank you, Pavel. Um, so, as Pavel... Um, that's all right, Natasha. Uh, if you have any questions of anything that we um, talk about, then, you know, feel free to add it to the chat. Uh, not everybody is going to want to uh, be recorded uh, because this session is being recorded and we completely understand that as well uh, that you don't necessarily want to be on camera uh, and then be uploaded to YouTube for uh, ever um, on the on the DevConf channel. Um, so whilst we're waiting for people to, to join or ask questions um, let me give you a little bit of an introduction to who I am. Um, some of you looking at the names, I recognize you and I think I know you already. Um, but my name is Imogen Flood Murphy. Everybody calls me Imo because it's easier and I prefer it. Um, I work within our uh, customer support group, um, supporting the support folks with all their operations needs. Um, and I've been a pa I've been passionate about uh, diversity and inclusion for many many years, um, and for the last four or five years, I think uh, I've been running the DEI group in the Bruno office for Red Hat. Um, this is actually my last weekend as a Red Hat Czech employee. I'm about to move back to the UK, so um, I will be handing over the mantle of the DEI lead for Bruno to somebody else. Um, I think it's going to be Kartik. Um, but uh, I think it's really important that people have the opportunity to meet up um, right at the beginning of a conference, especially if you don't know anybody um, or uh, want to make new connections through uh, who are part of uh, the diverse umbrella, um, whether that is you are a woman in IT, you're a member of the LGBT community, um, you are a person of colour, whatever that is, this is a great opportunity for people to meet and chat and get to know each other. Um, and then when you uh, are part of uh, DevConf or you go into the and I've forgotten what it's called, but this awesome new uh, environment that they have for the hallway track here, uh, the work adventure. Um, you can see people, see names that you know, and uh, just hop on a quick call with them and, and say hi. Um, or if you're in a session, there will be somebody there that you know. And that's basically why we have these sessions. So please do feel free to um, ask to be on camera. Um, and let's have a conversation. Um, any questions, any, anything? Um, uh, I don't know of any uh, non-binary parents personally um, that are at this con uh conference um but this could be an awesome place to meet them if there are uh we have 12 10 people in the room at the moment um 
And uh, so some of the things that I've been thinking about recently um, to, to get us um, started is um, uh, there's been a lot of conversations with uh, uh, with COVID in recent months around psychological safety. And can we truly have, I mean, it, it seems to me to be a, a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Uh, can we truly have uh, diversity, equity and inclusion without psychological safety? But can we also have proper psychological safety without complete diversity, equity, and inclusion. What do you all think to that? Feel free to just chat in the uh, chat window or ask to come and talk to us. I completely agree, Natasha, uh, that intersectional oppressions will make uh, people more fragile and more prone to mental health problems. Um, I, <clears throat> I think the hope is as we get more psychological safety, as people feel uh, in a space where they can uh, be honest about their health problems, whether that is med- mental or physical. Um, yeah, I, uh, as a uh, gay woman who grew up in the 80s in the UK, uh, it wasn't always a particularly safe place to be. Um, you know, and, and I am uh, at this point. Uh, my assumption is that everybody knows, hey, Lubos. Um, but I, uh, I don't advertise it um, for very similar reasons, reasons as you are talking about, Natasha. Um, the you know somebody might not accept me. Uh, what is what is an intersectional oppression? I I'm not familiar with the term. Uh, so intersectionality is where multiple um, diverse aspects of your personality cross over. So you may be black, female, and gay. And so those are the three intersectional parts of your uh, personality. Or, um, uh, yeah, so it, it's where... Um, different uh, parts of the diverse community come together. Um, you know, because uh, for the longest time, if you look at feminine, it was always white women talking. It was never women of color. And the needs of women of color is different to the needs of a white woman. Um, or the, the challenges for a woman of color is different to the challenges that I might have. Got it. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, So Nicola is saying uh, regarding the COVID impact, uh, in my opinion, it lacks the good mental health may hold back and prevent inclusion as we are more focused on ourselves. Um, I agree, Nicola. Um, I think uh, with the internet generally, um, it's really easy to be angry at a keyboard um, and you forget that there is a human being on the other end. And so we have become very insular and very focused on ourselves. Um, Oh, for sure, the the mental health problems can destroy constructive communication. Um, You know, if you if you know anybody who suffers from depression, um, the last thing that they're going to do is actually tell you that they are depressed. everything is fine and it's okay and they become quite aggressive at least that's my experience um and they just push people away uh and so that constructive communication disappears um
sorry, I'm just reading uh, the chat and trying to, to keep up. Um, Katarzyna, uh, I am interested to know which uh, company you work for. Um, I personally think Red Hat, as, as a Red Hat employee, um, it has a very good and welcoming environment. I think there are challenges, especially around some of the larger mailing lists that we have. Um, where people turn into internet keyboard warriors uh, quite quickly and go on the defensive. Um, but that's, I think, a, a general internet problem. Um, and we are, there are people at Red Hat actively working to create an environment that is accepting and uh, helping with mental health issues. We have our neurodiversity uh, community who uh, aren't only talking about people who are uh, on the spectrum, um, but also for other mental health issues. Um, in the uh, Brno office, we have regular sessions um, where there is a psychotherapist, I think, who comes in and, and talks about uh, mental health conditions. We have one session in Czech and one session in English for those of us who aren't smart enough to learn the language. Um, I include myself in that. Czech is an incredibly difficult language uh, to learn. Um, yeah, and that's another aspect of diversity um, is, is language. Um, Natasha, I think, uh, I completely agree. Um, I know that Fedora has a good and strong, um, DEI group. Um, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that, that Wikimedia France had set up a, a helpline with the trans psychologist. Um, and as these things become better known, as uh, groups um, and companies like Red Hat uh, share that, it moves out to the community. It then becomes, I mean, it's both, it's a two-way street. There are things that are happening in the community that are introduced to Red Hat as community people uh, get hired. Um, or people from the various communities get hired and, and they start asking for these things and think, hey, we do it here, why can't Red Hat do it? Um, or Google or Amazon or whichever company you work for. Um, uh, and, yeah, so um, I think... Uh, it's an interesting challenge, but as companies and, and people come more on board with this, um, I think it will get easier. Um, and it's great to hear, Kasharina, that uh, Red Hat, that you're hearing uh, from both friends who work here and outside that, that Red Hat is a good place to be. Um, I've been a Red Hatter for nearly 13 years um, and although I'm moving back to the UK I will continue to be a Red Hatter uh, because I believe it is a very very good place to be um, and I'm opening the link to for Mary now and we'll, we'll go look that up and um, make sure to let people know that that's also a great place to be. Um, any questions, any thoughts? Um, you know, I think uh, providing the help that we can, um, whether that is uh, through a employee up uh, perspective, um, bottom up, where uh, we have, for example, a coaching community um, where associates can reach out to other associates who have some training in coaching it's not um, they're not therapists they are not psychologists but they can um, 
just uh, talk and help maybe sometimes just listening helps um, to uh, help with a particular situation um, and that is all done on a voluntary basis within MedHat um, you know and, and I have seen things very similar to that working uh, in the gay community um, that there are services um the th the one that springs to mind is the uh london gay and lesbian switchboard um which is still running after 30 years as a place where you can phone up kind of like the samaritans um where if you're having a bad day you can phone up and talk to somebody who will understand what your uh challenges are and they've had some some training um and there are open source diversity and inclusion groups. Um, some of them run by people who are here. I don't know if Justin came back, but I know he is. And uh, it's lovely to see Yona here as well, um, who I know is uh, really active uh, in the diversity and inclusion groups um, for Fedora and open source more broadly. Um, Again, if you would like to join the conversation and not just have a uh, monologue from me, feel free to click the um, uh, the purple button in the top right-hand corner of uh, the screen, the meetup room where you can see my picture, um, and um, or Pavel and I, and, and come and join the conversation. Um, It's really great to see some names on the list of people who normally I would be sure to be going for a coffee with um, if we were in person. Um, so please do uh, click on the join the stream link um, and, and let's have a conversation. So um, a question to throw out there to all of you and feel free to add it in, to add your response in the chat is, what are your hopes for um, how a conference such as DevConf could be more inclusive in the future? Uh, do you find it currently not inclusive? Or do you think we're doing okay? And whilst uh, I hope some people are typing their thoughts on that, um, I will also uh, reiterate the question that I asked earlier I mean, and rephrase it maybe a little. What impact has the past couple of years um, had on you and your relationship to DEI groups or the community at large? How can we, um, has it impacted it? It certainly impacted mine. Um, it's made it more challenging. Um, I can, uh, you know, we, we had a session like this at DevConf, DevConf 2020 shortly before we all went into lockdown. Um, and it was a really great conversation. Um, with people uh, um, you know, just just sharing their ideas and their thoughts. Um, it is certainly 
easier to do that with uh, people in real life. Um, but it's great. I'm loving all the, the comments here in the chat. Um, Luna, yes, I completely agree. Um, as long as people are nice or at least accepting, you don't see any problems. Um, yeah, I also saw some of the hate that OpenSUSE, Arch and KDE and Fedora got when they changed their logos for Pride Month. Um, I think that's a, uh, that sucks that they that there was hate for that. Um, people don't like change, I think, um, and uh, they they perhaps don't see the need and don't understand the need for uh, inclusivity. Um, and yeah, so it, it sucks when it, when there is homophobic or any kind of phobic uh, rhetoric. Um, I have to say that when I see it online, um, I do believe that people probably wouldn't say it to my face, most of them. Um, they're cowards. It's really easy to be angry at a keyboard. Um, I agree. I liked the board with the pronoun stickers and the um, the lanyards to announce whether or not you wanted to be talked to or uh, photographed. Um, I've, I've seen that at other conferences too. Thank you for the, the time check, Pavel. Um, and, and it is really great um, to have those options um, and those and that be available because uh, not everybody, especially at an IT conference, I think, um, a lot of people are not necessarily comfortable with uh, people coming in, coming up and talking to them, strangers coming up and talking to them. Um, okay, uh, five more minutes, and uh, there is, uh, Katarina, I know that we did have a couple of quiet spaces where people could go and uh, sit and relax in the physical dev conf. Um, there was always one by the computer museum um, where there were bean bags um, and you could sit there and rest and I think there was one upstairs as well um, where you could go and chill out for a while um, uh, chill out chill out at Defcon Bruno in January is probably the wrong words to use because uh, my memory of being on reception is that it is freezing um, but where you can go and relax and uh, have some quiet time when you are overwhelmed by crowds and noise. noise. Um, yeah, so that there are those options available. Uh, with thank Chris for for uh, letting us know that at CCC is always nice quiet rooms for people. That's not a conference I've been to. I have to admit. Uh, I'm hoping that when the world opens up, I can get them. To visit more conferences in the future. So uh, at three minutes left um, I would like to thank you all for coming and, and listening to me talk today. Um, oh, let me just read what Nicola has to say. Uh, I um, understand. That's all right. That's not a problem, Nicola. Um, I understand and, and kind of agree that people get angry easier in virtual communities and they're less inclusive um, on the keyboard. As I say, it's really easy to be angry at a keyboard. Um, and uh, I think everybody at this point is frustrated with the COVID situation and is looking forward to a world where we can do DevConf in person again. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, one of the benefits of the hybrid event is that 
um, or the, the virtual event is that people can join from wherever they are around the world and they aren't necessarily, some people don't like flying um, and don't come to DevConf because they don't want to fly halfway across Europe or halfway around the world and come. So um, that's also a great way in which this virtual world can be inclusive um, to, to add people who might not be able to make it otherwise. So, thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to remind us that if you want to continue the conversation with him or between each other, there is the work adventure uh, place when you can just join and find each other and then have an even less formal way how to see each, see each other and chat. Uh, so, you're welcome to go there, for sure. Great. Well, thank you. It was lovely to... Uh, have this conversation with you um, and I look forward to seeing you all next year hopefully in person this time and we will see. Thanks everybody have a great day and I hope you really enjoyed EFCOMP this year Thank you very much Bye 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 bye